All right, so what do we have to know about major funds versus non-major funds? Well, major fund reporting is required for governmental and enterprise funds when reporting fund-based financial statements. A major governmental fund is one that is at least 10% of the total assets or 10% of the total liabilities or the total revenues or the total expenditures of all governmental funds. And then it has to be 5% of the total of all governmental and enterprise funds combined. So what we're about to do might remind you of segment reporting, where there's that 10% test. And that's because it's very similar to that. Remember, a segment would be separately reported if it passes the 10% test, either 10% of assets, 10% of revenues. But with major funds, with government, we actually include liabilities as well. So if you want to do a 10% test, you could choose to do it with assets, with liabilities, with revenues, with expenditures. And who do we do these tests for? Governmental funds and also enterprise funds. Because a major enterprise fund is one that's at least 10% of total assets or total liabilities or revenues or expenses of enterprise funds. And 5% of the total of all governmental and enterprise funds combined. What about fiduciary funds? What about internal service funds? Well, a fiduciary fund can never be a major fund, and that's a good note to take, nor can an internal service fund. And the general fund is always a major fund. So that might be enough to know for the exam just right there, that the general fund is always a major fund, and fiduciary funds can never be considered major funds, nor can an internal service fund, which is actually a proprietary fund. But even though internal service funds are proprietary funds, the only proprietary funds that could be major funds are enterprise funds. Other funds may be considered a major fund based on a 10% and 5% test. So if you're a governmental fund and you want to know if you're a major fund, there's a 10% and a 5% test. If you're an enterprise fund and you want to know if you're a major fund, there's a 10% and a 5% test. Is there a 10% test for a fiduciary fund? No, because a fiduciary fund can never be considered a major fund. Is there a 10% test for an internal service fund? No, because an internal service fund can never be considered a major fund. Is there a 10% test for the general fund? No, because the general fund is always a major fund. Why are we doing this test? Because government funds that meet the criteria of major funds will be reported in a separate column in the fund level financial statements. Non-major funds will be reported in total in a single column titled Other Governmental Funds. And you can say the same for enterprise funds. Enterprise funds that meet the criteria of major will be reported in a separate column in the fund level financial statements. Non-major enterprise funds will be reported in total in a single column titled Other Enterprise Funds. So let's try this question. The 10% test for major fund reporting applies to which of the following funds? A, internal service funds, no, because internal service funds can never be major funds, so you wouldn't waste your time doing a 10% test on an internal service fund. B, pension funds. Well, pension funds are fiduciary funds, and fiduciary funds can never be a major fund. So once again, we wouldn't waste our time doing a 10% test on a pension fund because they're a fiduciary fund. C, general fund. No, once again, we wouldn't waste our time doing a 10% test on a general fund either. Why not? because the general fund is automatically a major fund, always. So the 10% test would not apply to a general fund. But D, special revenue fund, is a governmental fund. And all the rest of governmental funds, you would have to do a 10% test to see if they're a major fund. So special revenue fund, letter D, would be the correct answer, because the 10% test would need to be applied to a special revenue fund, a capital projects fund, a debt service fund, and all the rest of the basic governmental funds other than the general fund. As for the test to determine major fund, now let's say we have a special revenue fund and we have a debt service fund and we want to know whether they should be reported as major funds. We could do a 10% of assets test. We could do a 10% of liabilities test, a 10% of revenue, a 10% of expenditures. The exam will tell you which 10% test you're doing. In this case, we're going to do a 10% of assets test to see if the special revenue fund and the debt service fund are major funds. And they tell us that special revenue fund assets are 750,000, debt service fund assets are 600,000, the total government fund assets are 9 million. 
And of course, special revenue and debt service fund, they're both governmental funds. So first we do a 10% test. We take 10% of the total governmental fund assets. 10% of 9 million is 900,000. 900,000 would be needed in total assets to be considered a major fund. And since the special revenue fund has only 750,000 of assets, it does not meet the 10% test. And neither will the debt service fund. Because the debt service fund only has 600,000 of assets. It needs 900,000. It doesn't even come close. So on the exam, they'll give you something like this, and they'll ask you which of these are major funds, and you'd say neither of these two. Neither the special revenue nor the debt service fund will be reported separately, but instead they'll be reported as non-major governmental funds. They'll be reported in total in a single column called other governmental funds. But notice we had to do the 10% test in order to know. And because they don't pass the 10% test, we don't even have to worry about the 5% test. So for now, we don't care about this 10 million of total governmental and enterprise fund assets because we would need to pass the 10% test in order for the 5% test to have any meaning. But let's change a couple things now. We're going to stay with the special revenue fund assets of 750,000. We're going to stay with the debt service fund assets of 600,000. But now the total governmental fund assets, instead of being 9 million, they're only 6 million. Let's see what happens now. Since total governmental fund assets are 6 million, 10% of that, or 600,000, is all that's needed to be considered a major fund. Since special revenue fund has 750,000 of assets, special revenue meets the 10% test. But then we multiply the total governmental and enterprise fund assets of 30 million times 5%, because now the 5% test is important to the special revenue fund because it passed the 10% test. 5% of 30 million is a million five. And that does not meet the 5% test. Looks like the special revenue fund would not be a major fund because they would need to have a million five in order to meet the 5% test. And they don't have a million five. They only have 750. Let's look at the debt service fund. They have 600,000 of assets. They barely meet the 10% test. 10% of 6 million is 600,000. So they're okay there, but they don't meet the 5% test either because they would have to have over a million five of total assets to meet the 5% test. So once again, neither of these are major funds, despite both of them meeting the 10% test. Neither the special revenue fund nor the debt service fund will be reported separately, but instead it'll be reported as non-major governmental funds. They'll be reported in total in a column called other governmental funds in the fund-based financial statement. All right, now let's change one thing. All we're going to change now is the total governmental and enterprise fund assets. Instead of 30 million, they're going to be 14 million. All three of these other figures are going to be the same as the previous slide. Since total governmental fund assets are 6 million, 10% of that, or 600,000, we said, is all that's needed to pass the 10% test. Special revenue fund passes that test because it has 750,000 of assets. Now, when we multiply 14 million times 5%, 700,000, as long as the special revenue fund has 700,000 of assets, they meet the 5% test. So what can we say about the special revenue fund? It's a major fund now because it met the 10% test and now it even meets the 5% test because 5% of the 14 million is 700,000 and the special revenue fund has 750,000 of assets. Since the special revenue fund is a major fund, it will be reported separately in its own column in the fund level financial statements. Now let's look at the debt service fund. Debt service fund, 600,000, it passes the 10% test, 10% of 6 million, it barely passes the 10% test, but it does not meet the 5% test. It would have needed to have assets of greater than 700,000 to meet the 5% test, and it only has 600,000. So that means the debt service fund, even though it met the 10% test, didn't meet the 5% test. So the debt service fund will be a non-major fund, and it'll be reported in total in a column called other governmental funds. So no separate reporting for the debt service fund. Instead, it's going to be lumped in with all the other non-major funds in a single column called other governmental funds in the fund-based financial statements. Let's try this question. Assume that a governmental entity has a general fund, eight other governmental funds, and three fiduciary funds. Three of the other governmental funds qualify as major funds. 
At a minimum, the governmental entity will report how many major funds. And if you think you know, leave the answer in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with government accounting or the CPA FAR exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and take the number one CPA review supplement, the I-75 course, where all videos are hosted by me, Darius Clark. And get on the right road to passing the CPA exam.